Have you ever seen persons who close their eyes when they're talking to you, when they're trying to explain something? Psychologists and psychiatrists say that when one closes their eyes like that, it is a visual denial of your words. I watched a video uh, this morning of a YouTube content creator. He's a Christian YouTube content creator, and he's a, a preacher. Not a well-known preacher, but he has quite a following. And the title of his video, Infallible Proof of the Pre-Trib Rapture. Now, what does that mean, a pre-tribulation rapture, pre-trib rapture? The teaching goes like this, that Jesus is going to return, take all of his followers off of the earth, and then the great tribulation occurs, pre-tribulation rapture. Now, is this something that Jesus taught? Did any of his apostles teach this also? Well, first of all, Jesus never taught something called rapture. We don't even see that expression in scripture. What Jesus did teach was the resurrection hope, not the hope that he's going to come down and take all his followers off of the earth and they go up into heaven and then down here on earth, all hell breaks loose, the great tribulation. Now, Revelation chapter 7 Verse 9 down to verse 17 says no to a pre-tribulation rapture. Now, to put this into context, if one goes to Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, it reads this way. The revelation from Jesus Christ that God gave him. Why? To show his servants what must shortly take place. Now, I explain all that in another video. also have a many articles on the uh, website that you find in the link in this video uh, explaining Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. When many read the Revelation, they just skip right past that part. They skip right past Revelation chapter 1 verse 1, which tells us who the author of the Revelation is. It's not Jesus Christ, it's God himself, because God gives it to his son for the purpose of showing his servants, that is Christ's servants, what must shortly take place. What many don't understand is shortly take place or soon take place after what? So all of that's bypassed. I explain all of that. And I have videos on this channel that explain it also. However, Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 through 14 says no to a pre-tribulation rapture. Now, if one goes there, the Apostle John writes this down under angelic direction. The Apostle John writes, after this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Now, one drops down to Revelation chapter 7, verse 13. We read there that one of the elders that was talking with John, then one of the elders asked John, these in the white robes, who are they and where did they come from? And John did not know. He answers that in verse 14. Then the elder tells John who those persons who are dressed in the white robes, holding palm branches on their hands, where they come from. The elder tells John, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They've washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So we see here a great multitude coming out of the great tribulation. Well, that doesn't jive with this pre-tribulation rapture. Because we see a great multitude whose numbers no one can even count come out of the great tribulation. And it is when they come out of the great tribulation that they cry out in unison, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. They don't cry out salvation before the Great Tribulation. They cry out salvation only after they come out of the Great Tribulation. So Revelation chapter 7 verse 9 through 14 says no to this pre-tribulation rapture narrative. Revelation chapter 2 verse 10 says no 
to a pre-tribulation rapture. For there we read, do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you life as your victor's crown. You see, many miss this because it shows that Christ's followers will suffer tribulation. And if they faithfully endure through that horrific time period, it is only then that they'll be given life, that is eternal life, as their crown of victory or their victor's crown. So Revelation chapter 2 verse 10 says no to some pre-tribulation rapture. Jesus says no to a pre-tribulation rapture in John chapter 16 verse 33. Jesus says this, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. There's a lot to unpack there because Jesus is saying there that his followers are not going to escape tribulation. They will have tribulation and that he conquered the world, so they will also in that he died and was resurrected. So therefore, if his followers die, they also will be resurrected. I'll elaborate more on that because the Apostle Paul talks about that at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Jesus again says no to a pre-tribulation rapture in Matthew chapter 10, verse 22. And there he says, you will be hated by everyone because of me. But the one who endures to the end, or the one who stands firm to the end, will be saved. Stand firm or endure to the end of what? He's referring to the Great Tribulation. If one faithfully endures through that faithful, horrific event, then they will be saved. Not before it. And this jives with what we just read there at Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 through 14. That this great multitude dressed in white robes and palm branches in their hands, they don't cry out salvation until they come out of the great tribulation. And this also jives with Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, because it is only after one has faithfully endured this test that his followers will go through, then they'll be given life, that is eternal life, as their victor's crown. So there is no pre tribulation rapture, Christ's followers will go through the great tribulation. The Apostle Paul says no to a pre-tribulation rapture in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through verse 18. Now, many of those who believe in this rapture teaching, this made-up rapture teaching, they pull from this passage at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18. If one takes this entire passage in context, what is the Apostle Paul talking to the congregation there in Thessalonica about? He's talking about dying and being resurrected again. He's talking about not being like those who have no hope. You see, today, many have hope in what? Some made-up rapture teaching. They don't have hope that when they die, that they're going to be resurrected. They believe that before they die, that Christ will come down, take them off to the earth, then they all go up into heaven, then the great tribulation occurs. But notice how 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through verse 18 reads. Here the Apostle Paul says, Brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death. Notice how he equates death to being asleep. So that you do not grieve like the rest of of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Christ died and rose again. This is key. So what is dying and coming back to life again? That is being resurrected. That is the born again experience. Being born again from the dead. So again, I'm going to repeat this. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. So we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in death with him. 
You see, so what the Apostle Paul is talking about here is the resurrection hope. Something Jesus promised at John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29, where Jesus says there, Do not be amazed at this, for all, not some, but all in their graves will hear his voice and come out. So here the Apostle Paul at First Thessalonians is talking about dying and being resurrected because Christ himself paved the way. He died and was resurrected. So if we are his followers, when we die, we too will be resurrected. That's the meaning of God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep with him in death. If we are in Christ, if we cling to his teachings, if we are his disciples, if we die, we can rest assured that we will be resurrected. Now, at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15, the Apostle Paul continues, According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, certainly will not receive those who have fallen asleep. What does that mean? That means that those who lived first and died first will be resurrected first. So let's say right now I'm living and those of you right now listen to me. Those persons who died before me and you will be resurrected first. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command. And notice this, with the voice of an archangel. The only archangel identified by name in scripture is Michael. This is Michael. Christ's name in heaven is Michael. Arch means chief, one. There aren't many archangels, there's only one. So the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of an archangel, and with a trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. God authorizes his son to resurrect the dead. So the dead in Christ will rise first. So those who died before those of us who are living right now will be raised from the dead first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds. When our turn comes to die, then we'll be resurrected secondly. That's all this means. When it says here that we who are still alive and left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And again, it simply means that we're going to die secondly and be resurrected Secondly, there are two resurrections. The first, those who died first, and those of us who are left who will die later and then be resurrected. Now it says here, caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. What does that mean, meet the Lord in the air? Does that mean floating up into the sky? No. Think, what do dead people not do? They don't breathe air. They don't inhale, they don't exhale. So this expression, meet the Lord in the air, means being resurrected back to life again when a person starts breathing air again. They're inhaling and exhaling. That's what that means, meet the Lord in the air, because it will be the Lord himself who resurrects us. And it says here, and so we will be with the Lord forever. And what's also important is what the Apostle Paul says in verse 18. Therefore, encourage one another with these words, not with some made-up rapture. The Apostle Paul here is talking about the resurrection of all of the dead. It occurs in two stages, a first resurrection and a second resurrection. So what I've given you is that there is no pre-tribulation rapture, that Christ's followers must and will go through the great tribulation. And if they come out of it faithfully and successfully, then they'll be saved. That's what Christ taught. Christianity is lying to you. Plus, rapture is never mentioned in scripture. Jesus never spoke of something called the rapture. Those Christians who teach that they're trying to pull a fast one on you because they don't understand Christ's teachings. You see, the rapture teaching makes it all easy for them. It's this escapism 
type teaching. And it's also selfish. Because what they're saying is that they're going to escape the great tribulation. And everyone else is going to suffer it. Yet Jesus says, you will suffer tribulation. And don't forget that great multitude that no one could count, dressed in white robes, coming out of the great tribulation. This is R. Jerome Harris, the disciple. Thank you for listening.